What's up everybody? I just want to take a quick look at Vega HBM2 overclocking and how it impacts gaming performance. Now I know that the Vega FE card isn't intended for gamers, however it does have gaming drivers available for it and it's not really exactly a professional card either, it's kind of a hybrid. Uh, so that's how I'm going to be testing the card today in games. I didn't see that much variability when I ran the card stock and overclocked in professional apps. So I'm going to be purely looking at games today. And with that being said, the drivers are very premature at this point, and some are even going as far as saying that it's using modified Fiji drivers. So Fiji uh, includes cards like the Fury X, the R9 Fury, and the R9 Nano. So by the time RX Vega actually releases, these results probably will change significantly. But um, this is kind of a, just like a very early preview. With that being said, there were some concerns about how well Vega could hold its memory clocks. What you see here is the Fire Strike Ultra score at the highest overclock I ran, and that is 1697 on the core and 1100 on the memory. All the tests were done with a 1697 core clock, so that didn't affect the performance in any way. And then memory clocks were in at 945, 1000, 1050, and 1100 megahertz. So if we look over to Wattman now, the screenshot shows the Fire Strike Ultra Run at 1100 megahertz, and you can see that the memory clock remains stable at 1100 for the entire duration, both in desktop and in benchmark. Um, the little dip that you see in the beginning is from the previous benchmark. So how these tests were ran, I started at 945, ran the benchmark, allowed the card to cool down, up the memory clock to 1000, and then so forth and so on, letting the card cool down in between. So what you see there is the card running at 1050 and then me bumping it up to 1100. But once it's at 1100, it stays there. And fan speed, once again, set to maximum. The card was actively being cooled by an AC unit. I should mention that. So this is really provides the optimal testing conditions for the card. And you can kind of see that reflected in the temperature. The maximum temperature in the Fire Strike Ultra was 62 degrees Celsius at maximum fan speed. And while GPU memory speed did remain stable, we do see quite a few dips in the core clock. However, it remains pretty close to the 1697 MHz that I set it at, and it never dipped below 1600. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks. Okay, so as you can see there, a lot of the results are pretty close, and many of them I would even say are within the margin of error. But if you take the lowest overclock run and the highest overclock run, from all the results you can definitely see an increase in performance. Now in almost all the games you did see a linear line with HBM2 speed. So uh, performance was definitely increasing, and if you average all of the results, there's about a 6% gain from 945 MHz to 1100 with the lowest gain being in both Fire Strike and Fire Strike Ultra. The games all saw about a 6% increase with Ashes of the Singularity gaining 7% and then the 3D Mark runs gained about 4 So as you can see, Vegas performance does change slightly with the speed of the HBM2, but you're not going to get any massive gains. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, this could all change once uh, RX Vega actually releases and drivers are improved. But for now, you will see about a 6% gain at 4K. And let me know if you want me to test this again at 1080p and 1440p. But this was just meant to be a very quick video just to showcase if Vega was affected at all by memory speed. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.